Do you turn on the computer at 10.30 at night and start surfing the web? Maybe you decide to jump into a massive spring cleaning project right before going to sleep. Or perhaps you're like me, a night owl who's just getting started when the sun goes down. Getting to bed on time is a chronic challenge for adults with ADD. The consequences of this habit can be devastating, which is why proper sleep hygiene is one of the first lessons of the 30-day adult ADD program. The science is clear. Sleep debt or sleep deficit impairs cognition, executive functioning, attention, and working memory. In fact, the results of sleep deprivation mirrors the symptoms of adult ADD, which may cause you to wonder if you have adult ADD or chronic sleep deprivation. The answer is often both. The impulsivity and procrastination of adult ADD often causes adults to stay up later, leading to reduced sleep. This sleep debt makes the existing symptoms of adult ADD much worse. It's a chicken and egg story, but in this case, the chicken is exhausted living on caffeine and only five hours of sleep. While all adults should be aware of the effects of sleep deprivation, this is particularly true for those with ADD. As stated, poor sleep exacerbates the already impairing symptoms of adult ADD. Many adults with ADD get into the habit of staying up too late, surfing the web, checking emails or Facebook without considering the consequences for tomorrow. If you're like me, there's always one more episode of your current Netflix, Netflix binge to watch before going to bed. Before you know it, it's 1 a.m. and you have to be up in five hours. And then you wonder why you can't focus at tomorrow morning's meetings. So what can you do to get more sleep and stop the chronic pattern of sleep deprivation and enhanced adult ADD? One strategy I suggest to my clients is to start thinking about bedtime much earlier in the evening. Doing so teaches you that going to bed is a choice that can be controlled. This may sound easy, but most adults with ADD don't think about sleep until three minutes before their head hits the pillow. Sometimes I hear clients complain that they don't feel tired until they li they're literally about to pass out. I believe this is true for those with ADD, and I know it's true for me. If you're checking Facebook every 10 minutes before bed, your brain will not get the signal that you're tired. Too much in other information is coming in and being processed for that message to get across. To counteract the effects of information overload, you need to train yourself to start looking at the clock and begin winding down at a certain time, regardless of how awake you feel. Winding down is the total time it takes to get ready for bed, including shutting off screens, getting undressed, washing your face, brushing your teeth, etc. Once you figure out the time you'll need, add 30 minutes to that number. Why so much time? Those with ADD procrastinate and get derailed from the things they have to do, which in this case is going to bed. Generally, I recommend one hour to wind down. For instance, if you want to be in bed by 11.30, you need to begin to wind down one full hour earlier. The best way to develop this habit is to set an alarm at 10.30 p.m. that signals the wind down time has begun. There is another advantage to ditching the screens at an earlier hour. Research shows that close proximity to a bright computer or smartphone screen activates the penile gland, which controls the amount of melatonin in your body. Melatonin influences biological rhythms, including sleep. Staring at a computer or a cell phone for hours before bed fools the brain into thinking that the sun is shining brightly and it's time to wake up and start the day. The problem is that in the real world, it's bedtime. Based on these simple concepts, I tell my clients that if they can limit distractions after 10.30 p.m., particularly smartphone and computer usage, they're halfway to making significant improvements. It's not easy and it could take some practice, but formulate, formulating new habits always takes time. To create the habit of winding down one hour before bedtime, get an old-fashioned wall calendar. Cross off each night you were able to start the wind down process at 10.30 and get into bed by 11.30. See how many days in a row you can manage. Make it fun and try to extend your streak one more night than you were able to before. Within a few weeks of this game, a new habit will be formed. To review, here are the, the five-step formula for adults with ADD. These recommendations offer a series of steps you can take to create a more consistent and effective sleep routine. First, establish a sleep schedule and stick to it. As mentioned, the schedule begins one hour before bedtime. I suggest a bedtime of 11.30 p.m. at the latest, as it may take up to a half hour to fall asleep. 
It's also important to keep not only the same bedtime, but also the same wake up time, even on the weekends. The pattern of consistent bedtime and rising time regulates the body's internal time clock. Second, going to bed is not like jumping off a cliff. Moving from frenetic activity to sleep is difficult for anyone, but for adults with ADD, the task is nearly impossible. Instead, create a relaxing wind down routine as a smooth transition from your daytime activities to sleep. In addition to an alarm to remind you to wind down, you can also s set some of the house lights to go off an hour before bedtime using a smartphone app and Hue light bulbs from Philips. Exercising the, during the day is also the third step in creating a more stable sleep cycle. Exercise helps rid the body of excess nervous energy and sets off powerful endorphins, which create the feeling of re relaxation and improve focus and concentration. Of course, don't exercise right before you go to bed as that may exacerbate the sleep debt. For Finally, ask yourself, is your bedroom warm and cozy? Sometimes cooler temperatures promote better sleep. So check the bedroom temperatures. Ideally, it should be between 65 and 71 degrees. Your bedroom should also be free from any noise or light that might disturb your sleep. This includes snoring from your partner, and you may have to temporarily institute def different accommodations for that. But adding blackout curtains, eye shades, earplugs, and even white noise machines can help transform your bedroom from a distracting space into one that does what it is designed to do, produce sleep. The fifth and final step is to ensure that your mattress and pillows are comfortable and supportive. Many younger adults often ignore this rule, assuming that they are healthy, fit, and do not need extra help from a mattress. However, Regardless of your age, you should take advantage of the many new comfortable bedding products that are available. I myself have spent hours looking for the perfect pillow at the local bed and bath store. If these steps do not immediately solve your sleeping difficulties, do not give up. Many people with adult ADD have bu built up a lifetime of bad sleeping habits and it can take several weeks or even months before the body becomes attuned to a different routine. If you find yourself having difficulty falling asleep, do not lie in bed ruminating about why you're not falling asleep. Instead, researchers advise people to get out of bed for a short period of time and engage in a quiet activity to refocus the brain towards relaxation, such as light reading, reading or having a cup of chamomile tea. As with any change of habit, a big part of a person's success comes from the decision to make the change, as well as having the right tools and strategy in place. Willpower without tools will not work, just as tools and suggestions will not work without a decision to create change. As you progress in your determination to mitigate the effects of ADD, taking control of your sleep habits will yield many positive results. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for the next lesson.